the protocol in Nagoya adopted the Nagoya protocol was adopted in 2010 in Nagoya in Japan regarding access to genetic resources and fair division or sharing of the advantages deriving from their use uh, completing the uh, convention on biological diversity adopted in Rio in uh, 92 regarding uh, biodiversity as a common concern for humankind. How are genetic resources defined? According to the Convention on Biodiversity, a genetic resource is a material of vegetal, animal, or microbial origin containing functional units which are important for inheritance and holding an effective or potential value. The scope of application of the protocol is about the use of genetic composition or biochemical composition of genetic resources, animal, vegetal and microbial resources for research and development and to be for the use of traditional knowledge associated with them. Regarding environmental ethics, the perspective of nature that the Nagoya Protocol belongs to is uh, anthropocentric. Nature is seen as a set up of resources with no moral dignity. Only human beings have rights and duties that must be taken care of in the protocol, which means that uh, the advantages given by the use of genetic resources must be shared in a fair way, as well as the traditional knowledge associated with them. Biodiversity, therefore, has an immediate use for the satisfaction of the needs of present generations, immediate satisfaction, research, food, medicinal plants, etc. How does the protocol see or foresee the access or the sharing of advantages? It sheds light on a very original context in order to look at environmental justice by focusing on the conditions of access and sharing of the rights deriving from the use of genetic resources and the modality of fair sharing of the advantages provided by these resources. Let us look first of all at the access to resources. It is based on respect shown for informed consent. The Nagoya Protocol can therefore be used as a legal weapon to avoid plundering of biodiversity or biopiracy. The use for commercial objectives of local and traditional knowledge and genetic resources without the informed consent of their owners. The use of traditional knowledge associated with genetic resources could lead us outside of the anthropocentric nature of the protocol because by doing so, it would take into consideration the interdependence between nature elements and human elements through a number of cultural practices and customs. The relationship with nature shared by these communities translates the will to preserve genetic resources in order to satisfy food preferences or the health of the people inhabiting those areas, biological diversity and cultural diversity show solidarity towards each other. But if we go out of the anthropocentric uh, characteristic of the protocol, it means that we have to check that the people holding those knowledge uh, are legally defended. And the protocol seems to be very weak in this field in, term, in legal terms. Knowledge uh, of the cultural customs uh, means that we have to share the local population's right to the resources. But there are two major difficulties here. First of all, identification of local autochthonous populations, because there are no clear criteria to do so. And secondly, acknowledgement in uh, local law regarding the state. What about sharing the advantages? There are two types of advantages described in the Nagoya Protocol. Financial advantages, for instance, access, uh, payment of access rights, or non-monetary uh, rights for food security. But there is no sharing with local communities. This orientation, therefore, means that we have to submit the choice of local community to the exercise of sovereign rights of states. If the uh, ownership, intellectual ownership rights are not 
acknowledge for local communities, it is very difficult to guarantee lasting access and unlimited access to genetic resources for the local populations. How can the sharing be fair in those conditions? Access to genetic resources for local communities, if there is no recognition or acknowledgement from, from sovereign state, cannot be guaranteed. Therefore, the lack of guarantees has two major consequences. First of all, the limitation imposed on the possibility for local populations to use natural elements in agreement with their cultural identity. For instance, the preservation of traditions or the respect of uh, eating habits or health care with natural products and also the fact that populations are kept away from the capacity to preserve their genetic resources and maintain them for the long run for themselves and for their offspring and future generations.